the M4 Pro Mac Mini, why did I upgrade, and what did I notice first? Welcome back to the channel. So if you've watched my channel in the past, you know a couple things. Back in November, I bought the M4, just the M4 Mac Mini, and it had 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD, all right? Now, I made a ton of videos on that, and I'll just, I'll show you a couple examples right here as I'm talking about it. I mean, I did a whole bunch of different videos on the SSD speeds and everything else, and that was the standard M4 chip. And I just loved that machine. It was one of my favorite machines of all time. I mean, that machine was really good for just about everything I threw at it. Obviously, for simple things like browsing the web or, you know, watching YouTube videos, it was more than fine. But I even ran my YouTube channel with that with 16 gigs of RAM and the 512 gigabyte SSD. Yeah, I mean, I was always right on the cusps of, of the swap there with the 16 gigs of RAM. But I think for like, and I said this before, for 90% of people out there that are maybe aren't running, you know, even a YouTube channel of my size, it's more than enough. It's a really good system. Now, if you watch those older videos as well, I also told people I thought the best model for just the standard M4 was just the standard M4, but with 512 gigabyte SSD. And the reason I said that was because obviously a lot of people run stuff off external SSD drives. And I understand that you can get, you know, with Thunderbolt 4, you can get like 30 something hundred megabytes per second. And that's good. But 256 was just too close for me. I want 512 just to have some buffer there because I like to leave some programs on the internal drive. And if you get it too filled up, it's going to slow down. So 512, I think was this perfect sweet spot for the M4 Mac Mini, not the M4 Pro, which we're going to talk about. But I thought that was kind of the main reason why I recommended that. And go back and watch that video. But in any case, I loved it. Okay, so with the standard M4 Mac Mini being so good, why in the world did I pull the trigger on an M4 Pro right here? This is the base level M4 Pro, 24 gigs of RAM, and the same 512 gigabyte SSD. Why in the world would I do that? It's actually for you. And another reason I picked this thing up is just take a look over here. I picked this up at Micro Center and they still have this crazy sale going. It's usually $13.99. This is, again, the, the, just the base level pro version of the Mac Mini. And it's got the 512, 24 gigs, but $11.99, 200 bucks off. Now, you can't even find this in most places. On Amazon, it takes like two months to ship out and they want full price for it. A lot of places aren't even carrying this. These guys have a ton in stock. It says 17 in stock right now. And this is there's they have stores all over the United States. So definitely check here. I mean, I got it because of this cost difference and it made that cost difference so much easier for me to stomach versus paying full price. I mean, I really wanted to test both systems and see if there's any difference between the two for what I do. That's number one. And then I want to go ahead and test Thunderbolt 5 accessories to see if it's actually worth it. See if the, the hard drives are faster. See how fast this M4 Pro chip is. So I want to do all this for the people that watch the channel. Did I really need it? It's still debatable. We're going to find out some stuff, right? But I mean, first of all, I just wanted to get it for you guys. I'm not, I didn't need it, I don't think. But is it going to make a difference in my workflow? And that's what we're going to find out over the next couple months. So subscribe to the channel if you want to see a whole bunch of cool videos on the M4 Pro model now, including things I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of accessories. Like I'm going to be doing a video next week on this. This is a RayQ. It's a hub with a SSD inside of it that sits on top of the Mac Mini. And we're going to test that out. We're going to do a whole bunch of cool stuff, including, you know, a whole bunch of Thunderbolt 5 accessories. So definitely subscribe to the channel. But let's keep moving. Okay, so in this video, I've only had this for a few days now, full disclosure. So what this video is going to be is what have I initially, just the small initial things that I realized right away between the two, what kind of things hit me and struck me that I, I said, hey, that's a little different. That's what I'm going to touch on right now. Just keep that in mind. These are not mind blowing, but these are things I noticed right away, like in the first day or two. Beyond this, we're going to go through, like I said, all that other extreme testing later. But for now, these are just initial quick thoughts and, and you know, what are the differences just initially? Okay, so a lot of people say, well, is this thing faster? Do you, do you, you know, is it snappier? Does it open up apps faster? Things like that. And to tell you the truth, even though people are kind of wondering about this, it really doesn't, all right? And the reason is, is because of this one right here, the M4 Pro and the M4 Mac Mini, that has the same single core Geekbench 6 core, and they're extremely fast, right? They're within, you know, within error, basically. Now, that means that basically, you know, basic tasks like opening up stuff and just, just everyday tasks are going to seem snappy on both of them, incredibly snappy. So while this thing is, you know, quite a bit faster on the, on the dual or the multi-core in Geekbench 6, and we're going to get into that, I mean, on just day-to-day -day ta tasks, it's not going to seem that much faster. So that's one thing you want to get out of the way right away. I mean, it, you know, when I put this in there, could I tell the difference? Just on doing day-to-day -day stuff, you know, spreadsheets and watching YouTube and stuff, you can't. All right, the second thing people keep talking about online is, is this thing actually going to be louder? Is it going to have more noise, the M4 here, or the M4 Pro, I'm sorry, the M4 Pro over the M4? Is it audibly louder with the fan? And to tell you the truth, over the first couple of days of using it, 
This thing never even turned on. I never heard the fan one single time, and, and I didn't on the M4 as well. So the M4, now it does have a different cooling system in here, obviously a lot faster chip, but overall, it's just whisper cry, quiet so far. I have not heard anything. Now, I've even done a couple small 4K edits on this thing, but as I kind of push this thing in the, in the next couple weeks or so, I'll report back and let you guys know. But right now, just sitting on the desk, you're not gonna notice an audible difference at all, so don't be worried about that. I mean, it's, it's super quiet, and it's not gonna affect like recordings or anything like that. I mean, I couldn't tell the difference between the two. Now, one thing I did actually notice was just this one little thing. So, and this might, you know, it kind of corresponds to what I was just talking about, but maybe not really. I don't know exactly how yet. But if I actually put my hand on the M4 Pro Mac Mini right here while it's plugged in, just doing normal tasks, it was a it was a little bit warm, but not even close to hot. I don't know how to explain it. I mean, lukewarm at best, right? Now, the M4, just a straight M4 was basically always room temperature. This might have been one or two degrees warmer. Now, when you push this thing, we're going to get into some more tests later. But again, for First couple days, this if I touch this, I could tell maybe two to three degrees warmer on an ambient temp, you know, the temperature of the outside of the box. And that's about all I could tell right away for all it's worth. Okay, so next we went on to do a speed test with the SSD, but again, this is just a quick initial couple day test here. We're gonna do a lot more later. What I was able to get, I'll show you up on Blackmagic, and this is gonna be the M4 Pro version right here. I was able to get 4,400 on the writes and then 4,900 on the reads, and that's really impressive. Almost, you know, close to 5,000 on the reads, and that's only with the 512 gigabyte version, the base level of the Pro chip. I mean, obviously, if you go up to one terabyte, two terabyte, three terabyte, or four terabytes, I'm sorry, it's gonna be even faster. So, but even at that speed, Speed, close to 5,000. I think it's fast enough for everybody out there. All right. And now if I go back to my older system, which was the M4 chip, not the M4 Pro, but the M4 chip Mac mini, which I tested with the same 512 gigabyte SSD in it, it was actually slower, but not that much. So I was able to get around 4,000 on the writes. This is 4,500. Now I actually, believe it or not, a lot of people weren't even able to get that on the older, on the, uh, the standard M4 chip. They were getting like 3,500. I got a fast one for some reason, at least from my testing. Um, but this one, you know, is definitely a little bit faster on, on the writes. On the reads, it's a lot faster. So I was able, on the, on the Pro chip here, I, like I said, I was at 4,900. But on the standard M4 chip on the Mac Mini, I was only able to get 3,000. So that's almost a 2,000 megabyte per second difference on the reads. And that's a huge difference there. But I mean, the question is, will you feel that and can you actually tell that it's happening and we're going to talk about that but still that's what I got initially but to be honest just in my initial testing I really could it didn't really make a huge difference to me obviously now a couple things that might you know I was working in the video editing and stuff and doing some things where you know possibly it would matter it could make a little bit of a difference but really like more things like file transfer if you're doing a lot of file transfer obviously the faster SSDs are going to make a difference but in reality again most people don't have you know you have to have an ex let's say I'm moving something to an external storage if that external storage let's say is only 3,000 megabytes per second and you know we're dealing with both of these computers are able to go faster than that, it's not going to really make a difference because your bottleneck now is the external SSD drive, right? So you, you rarely even notice this unless you're dealing with maybe Thunderbolt 5 drives. And then even though, I mean, you know, you're going to be waiting a few extra seconds. So, you know, just get, get, you can blow it out of the water that, you know, even though those speeds are a little bit different on the SSDs, it's almost impossible for me to notice um, without doing some extreme testing, which we will eventually. So one thing that actually did shock me was the speed of the external SSD drive when I plugged it into both systems. And hear me out for a second. So I actually have a, a this is called the Zyke drive. It's basically an external SSD Thunderbolt 4. So Thunderbolt 4 is the key here. And I actually put in an S and Western Digital SN770 SSD in here. And I've done a lot of tests on this on my channel. You can check it out. Overall, though, what I was able, this, this is the, the kind of the shocking thing that I got here because the speeds were different. And, and even though, you know, this has Thunderbolt 5 ports on it because this is the Pro model and the other one only had Thunderbolt 4, this is only Thunderbolt 4. So theoretically, it should make a difference on the speeds, but I did see one. Okay, so when I plug this into my Thunderbolt 5 port here, even though this is Thunderbolt 4 on the Pro model, what did I get here? I was getting around 3,500, and I'll show you a picture of this, 3,500 megabytes per second on the writes and 3,400, give or take, a little bit over that actually on the reads. And uh, so that's kind of, you know, it seemed like that went up considerably, and it, and it did actually. So when I tested this on the, the Pro or the non-Pro version, just the M4 version of this with the Thunderbolt 4 ports, well, let me just see here, what did I get then? I have to go back here. I got around 3,000 to 3,100 megabytes per second on the reads and writes. So I was actually able to get about four to 500 more plugging into Thunderbolt 5 than Thunderbolt 4. Now, I, you know, on paper, that should not make any difference whatsoever. In fact, people tell you that. 
But I mean, I tested a couple different enclosures and it was always faster on the pro version. You know, it's not mind blowing or, or you know, substantial, but still four to 500 megabytes per second is something, right? And I can't explain why it's happening. I mean, who knows, maybe they have some kind of better connectors in there, I have no idea. It should make a difference, but it is for me. Now in the future, I'm gonna be doing a bunch of tests with Thunderbolt 5 on this thing, and we can expect these external drives then to have around 5,000 and up megabytes per second as far as reads and writes. So that's gonna be substantially faster, but I can tell you right now, we're gonna determine this later, but something like this at 3,500 for the cost difference right now, what you're paying for this versus that, and the fact that nobody really needs that kind of a speed. I mean, 3,500, you can do any type of editing on. I mean, it's so fast that you're not gonna notice the difference. I mean, we'll, we'll prove it to you later, but I'm just saying that's probably gonna be well worth your money to buy a Thunderbolt 4 instead of the Thunderbolt 5, especially now that I'm getting a few hundred more. I just think it's a no-brainer, but we got to prove it to you later. Okay, now I did a video a couple weeks ago, and I'll put it up right here, but on my M4 Mac Mini, the standard one, I was able to, I was getting a lot of Wi-Fi wi 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 drops, uh, meaning like my speed of my Wi-Fi was going down when I actually had accessories around it, like external hard drives, hubs, things like that. It was affecting the signal and affecting my speeds. And again, watch that video. It's a good video, and, and you can actually figure out if you actually have a problem with that. Now, I actually did some of the testing here, and it's a little bit different. I want to talk about it. I mean, in that video, some of my Wi-Fi speeds would drop as much as like 50%, which is substantial. Again, check it out because you, you got to check to see if it's happening to you. Now, when I set it up on this thing, a couple things I noted even before that, I noticed that, I mean, again, I know that Wi-Fi can, can fluctuate throughout the day. Every single day it can be different, but I do usually tests all the time on it, and I usually get like 330 megabytes per second on the downloads, only 21 on the uploads because that's damn Comcast. I'm in some kind of weird tier there. Long story short, though, on this one over here, I'm noticing I'm always over 400. So right off the bat, I was thinking, now again, this is not scientific yet, but I was thinking like, this is a little unusual because it seems like I'm getting like 60 to 70 more megabytes per second or megabit per second on the actual um, speeds of, of my Wi-Fi, you know, as far as just download speeds. Um, the, the upload speeds weren't really affected, but the download speeds always seem to be higher on this than the other one, and I just don't know why. Now, there's definitely some differences in the inside of this thing because it's got different cooling and different thermals and stuff like that, so maybe it's affecting the shielding better or something, but right now it's just an unusual observation. The other thing I noticed too is I started putting some accessories around this, and this is the Pro version, and it wasn't being affected as much as the standard M4 version that I tested in that video. So again, I'm more testing is needed here, but things that would drop normally 50, let's say 50 megabits per second, we're only dropping maybe 25 with this. And, and again, this is not scientific, but it's just something I noticed right away in the first couple of days because I did some quick tests. And now there's still a problem. It's still not being shielded 100%, but if it's being shielded a lot better, it could be an advantage to actually spending the money on this one. Now gaming, something I haven't actually tested extensively yet, and I'm gonna get some videos out on that. Again, subscribe to the channel. But overall, I play Apple Arcade and maybe NBA, you know, you know, 2K25 or whatever, 2K24. I play those kind of games on the Apple Arcade. And to tell you the truth, between this, the M4 Pro, and the M4 Standard, I couldn't tell much of a difference, to tell you the truth, on those games. I mean, I wasn't looking at the frame rates yet and stuff like that, but gameplay and stuff and flu the fluid motion of the game is exactly the same. Now, when we get into more AAA games and seeing, and we're going to look at some maybe frames per second, obviously this thing's got 16 core, 16 core GPU. This is a standard model. My other system, which is the M4, only had 10 core GPU. There's a big difference of six cores there, right? It's not 50%, but it's 30, 40, 50, whatever it is. 70% difference, I guess. It's big, it's big enough to make a big difference. So we're gonna check that out. But initially, you know, is it a huge difference with like things like Apple Arcade and you know, those type of games? No. All right, finally, the biggest thing I did notice and just doing some initial stuff here, is like when I was video editing, I used CapCut, <laughs> they might be going away, but I was using them. And uh, I also had a whole bunch of other things open like Adobe, um, you know, all these different programs. Let me see if I can fold, fold, you know, pull them up down here. A uh, keynote down here, I had some voice memos. I had a whole bunch of things open. I mean, in, in some bigger applications. And that's what I normally do. I mean, I go to, you know, image applications. I have the websites open, Safari, and I start editing and I do a whole bunch of things at the same time. I did notice it was a little bit snappier then. and. You know, again, we're going to get into this a little bit more, but just the fluid motion of it, things like opening a little quicker when I had all that stuff going. Obviously now, hold on one second, my swap wasn't being as closely affected. Now, on my other system, my swap was, it was never using a lot of swap or barely any at all. In this case, it wasn't even close because I have 24 gigs versus 16 on the other system. And that's the big difference here as well. This one's got 24, the other system's only got 16 gigs. That could be affecting it as well. As well. But overall, I think there was something to this. Now, it wasn't so much, you know, exporting the videos. This is going 
going to be a little bit faster, and we're going to give more stats on that later. But this thing was really about the timeline and actually doing things like stabilizing the video, all right? Or, or trying to sync audio and video together. Things where you had to actually use the CPU power um, and not so much the RAM. It was actually really a little bit snappier. Like when you're doing these big things on, you know, say you're, you're working in an editor, you can do, you know, there's obviously all the little things are very easy for a lot of these systems to handle. But when you get into like stabilization or a lot of weird color correction or objects moving on the screen or tracing things, it can get a little bit, you know, these are where the systems struggle. And that's where I noticed the biggest place where this was shining. It wasn't even the export so much, although it's a little bit faster. It's all the other things that add up. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here, which can make a big difference. Okay, so at the end of the day, a lot of people are going to come back and say, well, the base model, it doesn't seem like there's enough difference here. You just get the base model, you're going to save the 700 bucks. But but hold on for a second, all right? This is coming from somebody that's used both of them. And, and I, run a, you know, I run a YouTube channel. I'm not the biggest YouTuber. You can see what I do here. But it does make a little bit of a difference. And I, the way I looked at it, after all this time I spent in a couple days with it, I figured I could, you know, this is a complete estimate, but I figured I might save about four or five hours. Let's say four to five hours a month. But let's just even go with the four hours. That's going to be 48 hours a year, obviously. And if my time, let's just say my time was worth $35 an hour, that's what I wanted to make. What does it come out to? $1,680 per year I'm saving on, on just buying this system right here. Because, and then that's just one year. I mean, if you times that by three years, you're talking over $4,500. Now, you can justify this any way you want, and you can say, well, you know, who knows if that's true. But it's got to be somewhat true, because I did notice the snappiness of just doing, I mean, if I'm sitting here going like this with my fingers, waiting for something to stabilize or for things to sync up, I mean, that's real time that I'm waiting. And by having that time back, I can create other videos where I can put that money in my pocket. And there's a lot of things I can do to create other money during that time instead of just sitting here waiting. I'm not the kind of person that can take 30 extra seconds and do something with it. Here, that 30 seconds will just be saved so that I can scrunch it together and then do something later. And that's kind of why it's helping me, I think, but we're going to find out more. Okay, so subscribe to the channel if you want to kind of follow the journey in this thing with the whole of these tests coming out in the future here. And I'm somebody that keeps it real, so I'm not going to be showing you, you know, does this, can this thing handle um, 8K edits on a $80,000 red camera? Because that's not me, and I don't think that's you. I mean, there's a couple people out there, Marquise Brown, Leah, I mean, people like that, but it's not me, right? I'm going to tell you, can this thing handle 4K on an $800 Sony camera, right? And that's kind of what most people use. And that's what we're going to find out. Does it make a difference where you're going to save that $1,650 or even maybe more? Maybe it's a lot more per year. And that's a huge amount of money. So if you want to come on the journey with the M4 Pro version here, the brand new for Mac, the Mac Mini that I have, and I've had the other version as well, I'm going to tell you the differences. Subscribe, and we'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.